Спасибо всем, кто подключился. Начинаем блок презентации образования в Техии. Первая презентация у нас сегодня Англо-Американский университет в Праге. Докладчица Катерина сегодня проведет презентацию и ответит на все ваши вопросы. Презентация будет на английском языке, поэтому вопросы тоже пишите на английском языке. Пожалуйста, спасибо еще раз всем, кто подключились. And uh, Katerina, I think you can start. Maybe. Okay, thank, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm. I hope that you are all having a wonderful day. And now I will tell you the most important things that you should know about the Anglo-American University in Prague, Czech Republic. But firstly, please let me introduce myself. So my name is Katarina Fundova. I'm admissions counselor at Anglo-American University in Prague. And what it means is that I am the person with my colleagues who helps all the students with their online application. We answer any questions that they might have. We also issue all the documents that you need for your visa. We issue admission decisions. I am scheduling your interviews with the dean because every single student who applies has to be interviewed by the dean or the assistant dean. And this is my portion of job. Uh, on the screen, you can also see my colleague, Sita Sakachia. She is the vice president of Students Affairs. Claire Boban, she is admissions manager. And Rebecca Newhouse, she is our recruitment manager. We have also a new addition to the team, Adia Ashirova, who is a new member of admissions office. She's also an admissions counselor. She is both admissions counselor and she is also an AAU student. So if you have any questions later, you can uh, send them to me and I can uh, ask her to answer them for you because she was supposed to be here, but due to a very important presentation that she has to give at school, she wasn't able to attend. But uh, I will then give you her email. And if you need anything, you can ask directly her because she is a person who can answer any study and student life related questions. And also a very important thing to mention is that, as you can probably see by our names, uh, e, every each of us is from a different country. I myself am from the Czech Republic, Claire Boban is Croatian, Yeta Sechachia is from Kosovo, and Rebecca Newhouse is from the United States. What this means is that uh, our team has a great advantage because most of our members are not from the Czech Republic, so that they experience the whole visa process that you would have to experience as well if you were to study at AIU. And also, not to forget to mention, Adia Ashirova, she's from Kazakhstan, so if you need someone to talk to maybe in Russian, she might be a great help. So now about the Anglo-American University. So AAU, as we call it, is an international university located in the heart of Europe. We have students from over 80 countries in the world. Last intake in fall, we admitted students from 39 countries, but there are a lot more nationalities uh, on the campus. So you are able to hear so many languages, learn so much more about different cultures and beliefs. And it's a great place to meet pe people who, are, who have the same goals and uh, they really try hard to achieve them. Then uh, another, probably the most important feature and uh, key fact about AAU is that we have uh, uh, programs that are accredited both in the US by American Accreditation Committee and also by Czech Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports. And this means that if you successfully graduate and you are awarded a diploma, your diploma would be valid both in the US and also in the European Union. So you can decide whether you want to maybe go on with your studies in the US or stay in Europe, or maybe if you want to find a job or an internship, you can do both uh, US and European Union. I'm sure that you can go basically anywhere, but if you wish to continue with your studies, you can either continue with AAU or you can try somewhere else. And both US and European Union would be 100% open to you. Other than that, we have also a very active alumni network. If you don't know what alumni is, alumni network is a network of 
students who already graduated from AAU or from any other school. As AAU has a very active uh, alumni network, and this means that a lot of our graduate students still cooperate with Anglo-American University, and they provide current students with internships, with their experience, and they help to make AAU as great as possible because it's something that they still treasure, something that they want to contribute to. Oh, AAU also offers interactive and applied learning. All of professors and lecturers, they promote uh, active discussions. They really want you to share your opinion so you wouldn't be just sitting in your class passively listening for 60 minutes uh, to someone who's talking about things. You would be encouraged to talk to, to say what you think. Uh, our professors and lecturers, they are from all over the world and they also uh, try to have as many student projects and external partnership as they can to provide you with most effective uh, way of teaching as they can. On this screen, you can see our school of study. We have school of school of business administration. This is our biggest one. We have school of humanities and social sciences. We have School of International Relations and Diplomacy. We have School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts. We have John H. Carey II School of Law. And we also have Global Degree Program in partnership with Kent State University in Ohio. Here you can see the angry undergraduate programs, which means bachelor programs uh, at the School of Business Administrations. This school is the biggest one, and I will give you a second so that you can have a look at all the concentration. And I will just quickly mention that uh, business administration extended major is a concentration for those who are still not sure which path would be the best for them. So if you are not sure which concentration you, can cho you would choose, you can uh, apply for extended major. And during your first semester or first two semesters, you can take more general classes and decide uh, which concentration would be the best for you. And then in the second year, you can focus on the concentration that you are interested in the most. I will give you a couple more minutes to see all the concentrations. I can see that I have already some questions, but I will answer all of them after I finish the presentation, but feel free to send them right away. Here you can see the bachelor programs of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. We have Humanities, Society and Culture, Politics and Society, Anglo-American Studies, Central European History, and Psychology and Sociology. These are the programs that School of International Relations can offer. It's again, extended major, which means the same uh, as with the School of Business Administration. If you are not sure which concentration would be the best for you, you can apply for extended major. And after a semester or two, you can decide what concentration you would go for. And the concentrations are European studies, security studies, global affairs, international law, human rights, political history of Central and Eastern Europe, and then political science. Uh, political science is currently being accredited and it's becoming one of our school as well, but you can definitely apply. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that on the website, you might find political science as an individual school very soon. These are the bachelor programs of the School of Journalism, Media and Visual Arts. We have Journalism and Communications and also Visual Arts Studies. And we have also two law programs. One is Bachelor of Laws and the other is Certificate of Higher Education in Common Law. And the thing that you uh, should note is that these law programs are done in cooperation with the University of London. AAU is basically a teaching center, one of the teaching centers that the University of London has. And this means that you would be studying uh, in Prague at uh, Anglo-American University. But after you successfully graduate, you would be awarded diploma from the University of London and it would be British accredited. 
This is a, a global degree program. It's, as I've already mentioned, done uh, in partnership with the Kent State University in Ohio, and it mostly focuses on computer sciences. And how this program works is that you apply to both AAU and Kent State University in Ohio. And if you are admitted, which I'm sure you will, uh, you then study two years in Prague at AAU, and then you travel to the US when you stay for two more years and you complete your bachelor's diploma there. The reason why it's four years is because in the US, uh, most of the schools have bachelor programs that are designed to last for four years. So in order for this program to be valid in the US, it has to be four years as well. But other than that, all of our bachelor's program are three years program. And the programs that the global degree can offer are computer information systems, computer science and emerging media and technology. Here you can see the graduate and the professional programs that AAU can offer. We have Master of Business Administration. This is a program for working professionals who has who have, have at least a bachelor's diploma and they have to be working for three years at least. It's usually done on weekends and it's accredited by Chapman University. We have Master Program of International Relations and Diplomacy and Humanities. Both of them are uh, accredited by the Czech accreditation and the US accreditation. And then we have Master of Law, which again, as the bachelor programs, they are accredited by the University of London because AAU is a teaching center for the University of London and we can offer law. However, your diploma would be British accredited and uh, awarded by the University of London. Now, let me tell you something about the learning environment. As I've already probably mentioned, AAU is proud to offer small class sizes. The biggest class that, sorry, the biggest uh, class that you would be ever in would have 25 person maximum, but it's usually between 10 to 15 people. So the lecturers and professors can uh, offer a personalized approach. They promote interactive learning and they really want you to be a part of an active discussion. So if you are in a class, uh, please do not think that you would be able to hide because some of the univer some universities, they offer huge classes, huge lectures, whereas for uh, 40 to 150 people, and you are able to hide there and basically be invisible. This will not happen at AAU because every professor will most likely by, know you by your name. A, then, then they really would make sure that you are active and that you contribute to the discussion and uh, to the interactive learning. Uh, on these pictures, you can see our campus, uh, AAU campus, uh, and the building is basically a classicist palace that was built in the 18th century. And it's one of the national heritages of the Czech Republic. And you can still see some features of the ancient palace, such as high ceilings, the beautiful chandeliers. Uh, in the top left picture, you can see our library. and. Uh, I am proud to say that our library is uh, the biggest English library compared to other private universities in Czech Republic. So if you want to find a book in English, you will be most likely you will be most likely able to find it in our library. And the great thing is also the fact that all our students can borrow their books in the library. So you don't have to pay for all the books that you would need for your classes. You can simply go there and borrow them for a semester or two and return them after you no longer need them. In the bottom right picture, you can see a park. It's Park Vojanovi Sady. It's right next to our campus. It is not our park. It's a public park, but it's right next to the campus. So if you are tired, if you want to hang out with your friends somewhere else during, during your break, you can go there, you can have a picnic uh, in grass, you can sit on a bench and just chill and recharge after your class.
Here are other resources and activities that our students can participate in. First of all, we have Academic Tutoring Center, and uh, you would go into this center if you needed help with your homework, if you needed to understand better a topic that you are maybe discussing uh, in one of your classes. You can go there, and one of our uh, students or professors can help you with all you need. All the students that are in the tutoring center have A's in their subject so you can you can be sure that they will tell you uh, exactly what they are supposed to tell you and that they will be correct we also have a career center uh, where they can help you design your cv they can help you with finding a job uh, during your studies or even after your studies they can help you with finding a right internship for you and as I've mentioned, we have uh, an active alumni network and our career specialist, she cooperates directly with our alumni, which means that uh, she is able to provide you with an internship uh, in one of our alumni's businesses or firms or corporations. We also have a psychological counselor. And these counseling sessions are offered to every AAU student each student has a right for three sessions with our counselor per semester for free. So if you struggle with your classes or someone else, something else, it doesn't have to be study related. If you have some personal problems or you're just feeling not as motivated as, as before, or you, you just want to talk with someone, with some professional, you can definitely visit our psychological counselor at AAU. Uh, we also have a Lennon Wall magazine and Soundbricks Radio. These platforms are run by our journalism uh, visual arts students, and it's a great chance to contribute in something as big as a magazine or radio. And we also offer a lot of study abroad, exchange and Erasmus programs. We have a whole office dedicated to study abroad, Erasmus exchange and university exchange. So if you wish, to study for a semester or two abroad, you can definitely go to them and they will help you find the best place that you can go to. And you can study for a semester and, or two and then come back to AAU and finish your diploma with us. These are some events that take place uh, at Anglo-American University. The first one and probably the most uh, popular one is Professors in the Pub. This event takes place in our cafe on campus and it's an informal event where students and professors and lecturers and faculty and staff, basically whoever wants, uh, they meet in our cafe and they talk about current issues such as COVID-19 or Me Too movement or something something else. And it's a great place where you can hear opinions of other and also express your opinion on this uh, on these issues we also offer law school roundtables mba open lectures when you can come and uh, sit and listen to mba professors we have annual academic conferences and also exhibitions these are our AAU clubs that we are proud to offer. Uh, the clubs that are listed on the screen currently are clubs that were existent in the past year. Some of them maybe no longer exist, but there are a couple new that just emerge. And uh, our student council wants to make sure that every student uh, can join a club of their interest. And if there is not a club that you would be interested in, you can simply find three more people who would have the same interest. You can go to student council, you can ask them to establish a new club, then they would approve and uh, you can start basically functioning. So if there is uh, not a club that would match your interest, you can establish your own. These pictures reflect probably the three biggest events uh, on at AAU. The first one is the picture on the left. It's from the new orientation day. We have orientation day for new incoming students. 
is a two to three days event before each semester where new students come, they meet each other, they can get to know, get to know Prague a little better, they get to know the campus, their deans, their professors, and they just settle in before the semester starts. So if you are admitted into AAU and you are committed and you are decided that you would come, you would be able to attend this orientation day as well. In the middle, there is a picture of our AAU ball. Uh, last year, the ball had to be cancelled because of COVID and some other events as well. But we are trying to do uh, what we can to make... Uh, the student life active and happy and interesting but this uh this ball usually took place in a Prague castle so it was a great opportunity for students to dress up hang out with their friends experience a really magical evening because the location is simply beautiful and this is one of the events that most of our alumni and students keep in their memories because they just really enjoyed it so much and the last picture is uh, from our graduation ceremony, because every year when our students graduate, we have a huge graduation ceremony. Last year, again, we had to make it on our campus because there were certain restrictions in place and we had to follow them. But it's usually in one of the castles or other beautiful places in Prague. And you can invite your family, your friends, and you can celebrate that you successfully completed uh, your program at AAU. Important thing for those who are not already living in Prague, uh, we can offer you also AAU housing. This housing is in Holeshovice. It's one of the parts uh, in Prague. It's not directly next to the campus, but it's one train right away from our campus. So it's a great location. It's a very popular neighborhood in Prague. Uh, this AAU housing, uh, we can offer single or shared rooms. And the great thing uh, is that even though it's a little bit pricier, the housing provider will give you all the documents that you need for your visa application. Because as uh, someone who needs visa, you will also have to submit your confirmation of accommodation. And once you pay your deposit for this housing, they will issue all the documents that you need. And we will send it to you together with other documents from AAU. So it's a great thing to know because uh, even if you decide to find your own accommodation, you always have to make sure that the landlord or the provider is able to give you the visa documents otherwise you, you simply will not receive visa and you wouldn't be able to come to prague another great thing is that the housing has 24 7 uh, reception and security it's fully equipped you basically would need only clothes to come in and you can you can settle in and start living there without a problem and also you can uh, you can meet your friends you can you can meet new classmates in there because most of our first year students definitely choose uh, this option. And now I will tell you a little bit about Prague. You may already know some of the information, but if not, let me tell you everything. So first of all, uh, Prague is very affordable compared to other European cities. Your cost of living would be about 800 to 1,000 US dollars, including your meals, accommodation, entertainment, and public transport. If you have your uh, student card, which you will have as a AAU student, your public transport cost would be really low because it's super cheap in Prague and super reliable, but I will get to that later. And also, if you apply and receive a study visa, you are allowed to work in Prague for up to 20 hours a week, which can earn you somewhere around from 300 to 700 US dollar a month, which can cover a great portion of your costs. These are some key facts about Prague. Uh, one of the greatest advantages is that Prague has one of the lowest unemployment rate in the Europe. So you wouldn't 
struggle with finding a job during your studies or even after you graduate you can simply simply find uh, so many uh, calls for positions you can send your cv and i believe that in a week or two you will definitely have a job it's a great student city because it's really safe and as i've already mentioned it's really affordable and uh, our public transport is another great advantage. It's reliable, it's clean, it's cheap. You can basically get anywhere at any time of the day and you will get there safely. And yes, it's, it's also cheap with your student card. It's, it's definitely, definitely cheap. And I travel by public transport myself basically every day. It doesn't matter whether it's a night or a day and I'm not even scared because it's, it's super, super safe. And now, if you would be interested in applying to AAU, this is what you have to do. So first of all, you, of course, have to choose uh, the program that matches your interest. You have to complete the application for, which is on our website, aauni.edu. It's a red button at the top, which says apply, surprisingly. You have to submit all your documents and the documents are your high school diploma uh, and now i'm talking about scans only so if you are applying uh, scans are sufficient if you decide to be enrolled at aau you would have to eventually submit also the hard copies but for the admission purposes all documents can be just scans so it was high school diploma, high school transcript. And the important thing is that you can apply if you, even if you haven't finished your high school yet. In this case, you would submit only your partial transcript that would include all the courses and the classes that you took so far. And if you are admitted, we will admit you provisionally and then you would be admitted fully after you submit your diploma. Then you have to submit your resume copy of your passport or your ID or your driving license. You have to submit a passport sized photograph of yourself because we would later use it on the student card that I mentioned. And you also have to submit proof of English uh, proficiency. It could be CAE, IELTS, TOEFL. We have all these listed on our website. I can show you later which one these are. And you also have to submit, it's the last thing, and it's a personal statement, which basically is an essay that should be 250 to 600 words, and it should address one of the topics that are listed on our website. And after all these uh, documents are submitted, we would schedule an interview with the dean or with the assistant dean, where you would talk about your motivation for your studies, about the reasons why you chose AAU and the particular program. You would also talk about your personal statement. So please make sure that, first of all, you write it on your own, because if you plagiarize the statement, if you just copy it from the, inter from the internet, you would be automatically rejected and you wouldn't even get to the interview stage. And, um, but if you do not plagiarize, if you write it uh, on your own, you can discuss this statement during your interview. It's also a space where you can ask you the questions, you can ask about the course, about the student's life and everything, and the dean would be more than happy to answer anything for you. And then if you are admitted, you can join the AAU community. Yeah. And this is all from me. And uh, before we proceed to the Q&A portion, I will show you where you can contact us. So my email is katerina.fundova at aauni.edu. You can also send email to admission, sorry, to admissions at aauni.edu. It's a shared email address where all of our admissions uh, people go. So it would be either me, Adia, or our manager, Claire Boban, and we answer your emails. If you would be interested in staying with AAU Housing, you can contact them directly at housing at aauni.edu. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whenever you want. We, we are, I think, everywhere. Our marketing uh, department is doing a great job, so you can definitely send your questions even there, and they would uh, be more than happy to answer. And now uh, the Q&A portion. So I will move here to the Q&A section and answer all the questions for you. So the first one is, 
I hope that you can see it. What are the benefits of working with Ohio University for students? So the great thing is that you would have the experience of studying both in the Czech Republic and also overseas. Your diploma, it would really great on your CV. You would be able to study two years in Prague and two years in Ohio. And if you are someone who wants to travel the world and you are interested in computer sciences, this is definitely a program that would be really suitable for you. Next question. Is there a difference at the Faculty of Law in the programs for Czech and foreign students? No, there is no difference. So uh, we don't distinguish between Czech or any other students. They all pay the same fees. They have the same rules. They attend the same classes. Plus, uh, the School of Law, as I've already mentioned, it's under the University of London. So the classes would mostly focus on British, Scottish uh, law. And there would be no difference for you or a Czech student. Another question. Is the campus located in the center of Prague? And the answer is yes, it is. It is in Malá Strana, and it's basically the old part of Prague. It's super beautiful. It's right uh, under the Prague Castle. So if you go to school, you can every day see the Prague Castle in front of you. And you cannot expect to have uh, many restaurants and shops around the campus because it's basically like a historical center. So it's more touristy, but you can hop on a tram and get to a different part of Prague within like five to 10 minutes. So if you need to buy something or go for a quick lunch with your friends, you can either go to our cafe or you can go somewhere else. But Malastrana, it's super, super pretty. And it really is in the, in the center of Prague. Another question. This is some sort of university pub. And I believe that you are talking about the cafe that I showed uh, when talking about the professors in a pub. And it not it is not a pub itself. It's more like a cafe where you can go, they cook uh, like two meals, a soup a day. You can buy some wraps and you can also buy a beer. You can buy a wine and you can just chill there with your friends they close around 7 8 p.m so you wouldn't be really able to like party there but you can definitely go there after school or in between your classes and hang out with your friends there and some of the some of our students uh, even work there we have on campus jobs so once the semester starts you can reach out to our cafe owner or to our librarian or to our operations manager and you might be able to get a job at the reception and this cafe in a library or somewhere else do students pay for the activities of the clubs themselves or is, uh, is it, it funding from the university? So the clubs itself, they run for free. But if you were to go somewhere, for example, if there is a hiking club and you would decide to go to a different part of the Czech Republic for a hike, you will most likely pay for the train ticket. But other than that, the clubs are funded, so you don't have to like pay for being active and for being out there. I, I hope this answered your question. If not, feel free to send me one more question and I will definitely get to there to that. So another question. Do you have any scholarship for foreign students that can suggest? So the thing is that we don't have any scholarship as, as such. We have so-called merit-based scholarship, and it's for all students. Again, it doesn't matter whether you are from Russia, Ukraine, Czech Republic, or the US. It's for anyone. And what it means is that if your GPA for the first semester is 4.0 or 3.9, your following semester would be for free. And this works for the whole three years if you are a bachelor uh, student or for the two years if you are a master student. 
So if you are doing great, you have great marks, you are really motivated, active, and you work hard, your following semester would be for free. The thing is that everyone has to pay for the first semester and the scholarship applies only for the second semester students. But it's uh, it's possible and if you work hard the whole time that you study, you can basically pay for the first semester only and every other one would be for free. By the way, thank you for all the questions. It's great that you send them over. And another one is, how much does a dormitory cost and do all of the students have their room? So the dormitory, it's a little bit changing every semester due to inflation and it's around 1600 Czech crowns per month. I'm not sure how much it is now in uh, US dollars or in, um, in euros, but I believe that you can convert. I will say it once again, it's 16,000 Czech crowns, somewhere around that. And not all of our students do not have their own room. There are some single rooms and there are some double rooms. And once all the single rooms are taken, students have to be in the double room, which is uh, less expensive. And uh, the great thing is that if you meet someone or if you know someone who is uh, going to attend AAU as well, you can email them and request that you too would be in the one uh, shared room in the double room. Okay, next question. Is knowledge of the language required with a certificate or do you have some kind of internal test or review? So every student who is not a native speaker or who didn't uh, attend high school that will be accredited by some of the English speaking countries such as US, uh, Britain, Australia, they have to have a language certificate. Uh, your language uh, knowledge would be also reviewed during your interview, but you have to submit some kind of a certificate. One of uh, one of the certificates there are listed on our website. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to proceed to the interview stage. Sorry, I got a little bit lost in the questions. Mm -hmm. This has already been answered. Yes, thank you. And this is another one. What is the average cost per year of study? So the price for one semester is 29,520 check rounds, which is around 4,000 US dollars per semester. We always uh, say the price in semester because thanks to our merit-based scholarship a lot of our students do not pay for the for the whole year they pay only for the first semester and also it's important to mention that if you are admitted you would be asked to pay the tuition for the first semester this tuition payment would include uh, five classes administrative fee and most likely your student card and even if you do not take all five classes, you, you decide to take only three or four, the rest of the money would be transferred to the next semester and or it would cover other other costs. For example, because if we issue the visa documents or you have the housing confirmation, we have to ship it to you via DHL and it might cost somewhere between one to three thousand check rounds and we can use this extra money to cover this cost. And then after you pay for the first semester, every following semester you would pay only for as many classes as you would take. But the first semester, the price is same for everyone, no matter how many classes you would uh, take, really. Thank you. Another question is, how much do students in the Czech Republic earn on average from a part-time job working at a university? Uh, so... On average, from a part-time job, if, if we are speaking about uh, the maximum possible hours that you can take as a someone who works part-time, it's uh, 12, 20 hours a week, which is basically 50% of the regular full-time job. 
you are able to earn between 10 to maybe even 20,000 Czech crowns, depending on where you work. I think that you would be definitely able to find a better paid job off campus because there are some corporations that, I ha that are hiring internships and young people and you would be able to earn more there than in a small library, in a small university. But uh, it can definitely, the part-time job could cover at least your accommodation, let's say. Thank you for the question. And another one is, I'm interested in master degree programs of marketing. Can you suggest me some programs of it, please? So AAU unfortunately doesn't offer master of marketing. We have master of business administration. It's the program that I mentioned. It's for working professionals. So you have to have at least your bachelor's diploma and you have to have two or three years experience uh, to be able to attend. And this program is thought mainly on Fridays and weekends because uh, the people who attend are working. And then you would be awarded a diploma from Chapman University because it's accredited and it's done in partnership with uh, with Chapman University in the US. But a business master of business or master of marketing as such, AAU does not offer. The only programs that AAU offers, the only master programs are uh, master in humanities and master in international relations and diplomacy. And we also have master of law, but again, it's thought uh, in cooperation with the University of London and you would be awarded a diploma from the University of London. Next question is, how much does mobile internet cost per month for a student in the Czech Republic? So if you go, for example, with a Vodafone, it's one of our uh, internet slash mobile provider, and you have your student card, you could be able to find uh, a mobile plan for three to 500 per month, including free SMS text, free internet and free uh, calls. We always make, before you arrive, we make like a package of information that you need. And one of them is uh, about your mobile plan. So, but if you would like to have more specific information, I would ask you to email me either to katerina.fundova at aun.edu or to admissions at aun.edu. And I can provide you with further information and I can also send you a link. But it's really cheap. I'm not sure how much it costs in your country, but compared to plans for non-students in the Czech Republic, the students one are really, really cheap. Another question is, is it possible to get a deferment from military service at home while studying at the university? And what, what does the procedure look like? Well, it really depends. Uh, uh, it's a great question. And it's the first time that I was asked something like this. And I think that if you want to be, if you want to defer your military service, you would have to reach out to the military authority and ask them about the requirements. And then we might be able to provide you with all the documents that you need for this. But uh, you would have to ask them directly. But thank you for the question. If you need to if you need to know more, just feel free to send your question via email and I can try to find as much information as I can. Another question. Can I drive in the Czech Republic if I got a Ukrainian driver's license or do you need to undergo additional procedure? So I'm not sure how it works in Ukraine, but uh, in the Czech Republic, if you go somewhere else and it's not uh, European Union, you have to basically have like a confirmation that your driving license is valid. And what we do is that we go to some kind of a ministry or uh, a different authority and we 
uh, submit our driver's license and they give us uh, the confirmation that we can drive in the country that we want to drive in. So I'm not sure, but I can definitely find this information for you. So if you want, you can send me an email and I will be more than happy to provide you with further information. Another question is, do you offer any scholarship or grants for foreign students? How is it possible to get them? So I've already answered a similar question. We have merit-based scholarship. I will just quickly summarize. What it means is that if your GPA is great, your following semester is for free. So this means that this scholarship is valid for second semester students only because we have to evaluate your, uh, pro your semester prior to the next one. So, uh, and how do you get it is that you <laughs> work hard, you try to have as great marks as possible. And if your GPA is great, you would be automatically reach out and you would not have to pay for the following semester. And this scholarship is for every student, no matter where they are from, because we are Anglo-American University and we are very international and we do not distinguish between or among any students. So it doesn't matter whether you're Czech, uh, you're from the US or Ukraine, we don't uh, we don't take this into consideration and everyone is treated the same way. Another question is, is it possible to apply for Czech citizen citizenship after receiving a diploma? It is possible. However, I myself am Czech, so I didn't have to go through this procedure. But some of my colleagues have uh, Czech citizenships, even though they are from different countries. But I believe that you would have to live there and work in the Czech Republic for five years at least. I'm not sure if it's five or more, but I believe that after three years of study, you wouldn't be able to get Czech citizenship. You might be able to get some kind of long-term permit, uh, but you wouldn't have the same rights as uh, Czech citizens, such as you wouldn't have to be able to vote uh, or something like that. And you can definitely apply for the citizenship later, but I don't think it is right after you graduate. But again, if you uh, want to know more, I can do some research and I can provide you with all the information that I can find. So next question is, what specialties are currently employed in the Czech Republic after receiving a diploma? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand this question, how I should, but what specialties? Employed in the... uh, if you're asking like it what in what branches are our graduate students employed, it really depends on which school and which program they attended. Because if you are, for example, someone who wants to study humanities and social sciences, then you can work in, let's say, a community center, you can work in a retirement home, you can work in research, you can you can teach. But then if you are a uh, someone who studied business, marketing, or or law, it would be completely different. You can then work in some kind of a business corporation. You can have your own business. You can uh, become a lawyer. It really depends on which path you choose. Another question is, how long can you stay in the country to find work after graduation from Ohio University? Uh, if you mean how long you can stay in Ohio, I would have to reach out to the program coordinator in Ohio. She uh, helps us, we cooperate and we communicate with her if we need to discuss something. Her name is Sara Morato, so if you would like to search her name or email her, you can definitely do so. And uh, because the rules in the US and Czech Republic are completely different, and I unfortunately don't know how it works in the US since we are located in Prague, but uh, if you want, again, I will tell this several times, I think if you want to know more, feel free to send this question again to me via email 
and I will reach out to our partners in Ohio and I can provide you with the correct answer. Well, thank you. I'm happy to learn something new as well. And another question is, what is the payment system for the whole year, semester or monthly? So uh, the first semester have to, has to be paid in full. After you are admitted, you would receive your admission decision and then it would be followed by an invoice, which is issued uh, usually between one to three days. And once the finance office issues the invoice, we will send it to you and you have to pay for the first semester uh, at once. But you can request uh, an installment plan, which means that you would pay 40% of your tuition and the rest of the payment would be uh divided into installments but this plan has to be approved by the finance office and we cannot guarantee that everyone who requests it will get it and then uh every following semester you would pay as you go there are some deadlines and it really depends on how many classes you take what you, what year you are so you would be uh, able to get more information once once you are there Another question is, do you have summer language preparatory courses or a preparatory year? And the answer is unfortunately not. We do not have. We have a summer semester that students who wish to finish their studies faster can attend, but it is not for first year students. So I'm sorry to tell you that uh, that not. And I also wanted to mention important thing is that we have a so-called rolling admissions, which means that you can apply the whole year round, no matter whether you are interested in the fall 2020, you can already apply. And we have two intakes uh, each year. The first one is in fall. It's our major one. Uh, it's for the fall semester, which starts at the end of August. It's always start uh, last day of August. And then we have a spring semester. It's a bit smaller, but we still have some students who are interested in it. Uh, interested in and uh, this semester starts at the beginning of February so at this point you can apply for the spring semester even though it might be too late for this spring because you would most likely not receive your visa on time but if you are interested in the fall 2022 or the spring 2023 actually already you can apply now and we will process your application and you you can be just you would be admitted and then you would just finish your high school, submit all the all other documents and you would be good to go and study with us. Another question is where can I check the fee of the faculty? So I can uh, show you, I will make a note and I will show you where to find it on a website. But basically our website is aauni.eu and if you go to admissions or students life there is section uh, finance and tuition and you would be able to find it there but i will make a note and if we have time i can show it to you thank you very much another question is is there a language school uh, there are several language schools in Prague, but we are not one. We are Anglo-American University, which means that we are a university that is fully in English. So all of our courses are in English. Our main communicate language for communication is English as well. But we are not language school in a way that you would attend to practice your English and maybe get a certificate. We are university where you would get, you will be admitted with a certain level of English already. And then if you are successful, you would have bachelor's or master's, master's diploma. Another question, how many students are there in the class? So it's usually the maximum size is 25 people. And some of uh, the classes that are most popular and uh, are the classes of our biggest programs, they're, that they are sometimes full, but usually it's between 10 to 15 people depend uh, depending on which class it is, of what school, if it's popular or not. But you uh, most likely will be in class with around 15 people, let's say. I will also 
I will go, I will make another note to write uh, my email in the chat after we answer all the questions. We have uh, just a couple left. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Thank you very much as well. Thank you to everyone who was here. And the last one actually is, uh, you answered your own question and thank you. So the answer, if you can uh, drive with Ukrainian driver's license is Prague is that yes, uh, you can. And now I will, I hope that you can see it. I will write you, uh, I will write you my email address. So it's it's katerina.fundova at aunu.edu or you can send your email to admissions at aunu.edu as well. And now, since we have uh, some time left, I will show you uh, our website and show you where you can find everything about the tuition and stuff. So I hope you can see it. So this is our main uh, page. The address is aaune.edu as Anglo-American University. And if you go to admissions and you go to tuition and financing, you would be able to see the tuition fees. This is for the undergraduate is for bachelor programs and you can see the price for one semester. It's $4,283 per semester. And next to it is the price for the whole degree. This means for the whole three years. Underneath you can see the, for the graduate programs it's a bit more expensive and below is the price for the school of law because as i've mentioned a couple of times these programs are under the university of london so the prices are a bit different you can also find more about refund policy about the merit-based scholarship that i told you about so if you need more details you can definitely find it here and also if you go again to admissions and if you want to apply i think that most of you would be interested in bachelor's program you can go to undergraduate and these are the requirements that we have so these are all the documents that you have to submit high school diploma high school high school transcript english language uh, exam results your resume personal statement copy of passport or id and a photo and here you can see the English certificates that we accept. I will give you a second. I believe that IELTS or TOEFL can be done online. So if uh, COVID pandemics prevents you from going anywhere and test yourself, you can do it online and we, we recognize it as well. If you have IB diploma uh, and you have uh, a uh, English at A or B, you can be eligible for waiver. And these are other other reasons why your English proficiency test can be waivered. So if you have uh, academic education in one of the English speaking countries, if you are a native speaker, if you hold West African Senior School certifi Certificate, and also if you have IB. So you can find all this information here. And last thing that I want to show you is if you go to programs and you click on undergraduate, you can see all our schools and our programs. So if you would, and yes, the uh, political science is already as an individual school. So if you would be, for example, interested in, let's say, humanities, social sciences, in politics and society, and you want to see what programs or what classes you would take, you can click on program structure. And here are the programs or the classes that you would have to take. There are some uh, mandatory classes that everyone has to take, such as composition. 
they there are some major modules that you have to take as a student of this particular program and then there are some electives and you have to or you can choose one uh, or more from each group basically so it would be at the end like actually up to you which direction you would go to because you can kind of uh, design your the program uh, on your own so this is for the website I will uh, stop sharing the screen and I will see if there are any more questions. Okay, and now we have still some time. So I will give you time to think about some more questions. If something pops, pops up in your head later, feel free to send it to me via email. And now I can, uh, because most of our students are interested in what the campus looks like and how the school looks, I will um, share with you uh, our campus tour with my colleague Rebecca Newhouse. So you will have, you can watch it and think about uh, of any other questions that you might have. Hi everyone, welcome to your virtual tour of campus. I'm excited to show you around. Follow me. Welcome to your virtual tour of campus. I'm excited to show you around. Follow me. So, this is reception. This is Adia. She's one of our receptionists. She'll be happy to help you with any questions you may have. This way. This is our print center. Here we have a lovely print center helper. You'll be able to print anything you need for classes here. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask. Through this door is student services. Student services is here to help you with registration, adding and dropping classes, and anything else you may need. We also have a career center here, which is usually open during the school year. And around that corner is the bursar, where you'll pay for anything extra. Follow me this way. This is our main entrance. For you as a student, you get into this door with your student card that you can pick up at Student Services. For me as an employee, it's a fingerprint. So this is our main entrance, and this is actually a student lounge. You can hang out here in between classes, meet up for study groups, or just see who's around. Go follow me this way, we have another student lounge. This one's great to use in between classes because there's a charging center right here, and because there are lots of classrooms directly off. If you'll follow me, this is one of our bigger classrooms. And back out here, I'll be happy to show you another. Now all of these classrooms start with the number 2 because we're on the second floor. So if you have a class in 205, 206, 204, that's these classrooms. Here we have another student lounge. And directly opposite this student lounge is the staircase behind you. At the top of that staircase is our study abroad office, in case you're interested in studying abroad. Yet another student lounge. Notable here is our bulletin boards. On this one here on the left, you'll find information about internships, job opportunities, roommates available. And here you'll find information about clubs and cool events on campus. This is our dean's hallway. Our deans are always in their offices ready to help you with anything you need relating to classes. So if you'll follow me, this is Humanities and Social Sciences. 
This is International Relations and Diplomacy. This is our Business Department. This is Journalism, Media and Visual Arts. Our Law Offices are upstairs. And this is the Dean of Students Office. She's here to help you with anything student life related. On this side of the hallway are classrooms. These classrooms start with the number 3. So if you have 310, 311, 312, that's these. Behind me, you'll see the President's Office. You'll most likely not need to talk to him, but if you do, he also has an open door policy. Now, if you'll follow me this way, students are actually not allowed in this section of the building, but you're special today, so come on. Now I'm gonna show you a really exciting room. This room behind me is our biggest room, and we like to have conferences in here where you can win some cool stuff. A girl won an iPhone in here once. Make sure you always know what's happening in this room. Follow me. So this is our student courtyard. Please do note, this building is actually a kindergarten. Please don't wander in there. Directly across, we have classrooms. This one with the closed doors is the visual arts study space. The rest are normal classrooms. They actually used to be the garages for carriages back when this was a palace. Follow me and I'll take you to our student cafe. So this is our student cafe. You'll notice it is priced for student budgets and you can actually work here as a student. You'll have to talk to Bill if you want that. Yeah. Follow me back out this way. Now in this courtyard, we do often have some cool events for all incoming freshmen, like barbecues, Halloween parties, sometimes events to buy new clothes. So make sure you're always aware. Through these doors, we do have a student lounge, yet another one. This one's cool though, I'll let you discover it on your own. Now this is the door to some additional classrooms and to our computer lab. There are a couple of classrooms at the top that are mostly used for things like business and law, so if you're looking for your classroom and you're unsure of where it is, good chance it's through this door. This is our park. Now we don't actually own this park, it is a public park. It's rumored it's the oldest park in all of Prague. It is a hotly historically debated rumor though, so maybe do some research on your own to see. It's also full of peacocks, so it's worth exploring. Now I'm gonna take you to our library. We actually have the largest collection of English books in the entire Czech Republic, so we have to do it in a different building. So if you'll follow me down the street, okay? Keep up. This is where our library is located. Now we don't own this entire building, as you just saw. There's actually a cafe on the bottom floor that's separate from us, but all of our students do get a 20% discount. Now on the top floor of this building, we have an academic tutoring center, we have a psychological counseling center that each student gets three free sessions per semester in, and we have additional classrooms. We also have additional classrooms on the second floor, but that is primarily where our library is located. Follow me, I'll show you around. There are classrooms here, as well as behind, and the library is this direction. Hi, Zuzka. Yes. This is our library. This is Zuzka. She's our head librarian. Extremely helpful, so she's always here to help with anything you need. She also has some really nice leaflets of information. In order to graduate with us, you'll have to write a thesis, so you can find examples of theses here. And if you'll follow me, I'll show you our textbooks. So, our textbooks are located all around this room. They're all free, they're rentals. However, a lot of our materials are found online. So, always make sure you consult the list to make sure if we have your textbook or not. I also invite you when you're in here to take a look at the ceilings. They're all original, hand-painted. It's a lovely environment. If you'll follow me this way. 
As you enter each room, you're going to see additional materials. They start on the left and wrap around, and they're all sorted according to the Dewey Decimal System. If you don't understand the Dewey Decimal System, no worries, neither does anyone else. That's what the librarians are here for. Here we have our silent study room. If you're the type of person who needs a really nice, quiet environment in which to study, this is the room for you. We have comfy chairs, we have a lot of different resources, and at night we even sometimes have events in here like poetry readings. It's definitely worth knowing what's happening in the library. I hope you enjoyed this very brief tour. This concludes our campus tour. As you know, we have a small campus and a small student body. I look forward to meeting you in person, and if there's anything you've missed, feel free to watch it again. Goodbye. So this was uh, for the tour. I will show, I will just share uh, the presentation again so that you can see any contact emails that you might need. And I've received, uh, received one more question among, among other thank yous. Thank you so much, all of you. You didn't have to spend time with me here, so I'm really grateful that you did. And the last question so far is, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it now. But the question was, if I have a bachelor degree, is it an advantage? And the student has already left, but I will answer it in case anyone else is interested in this as well. So the bachelor degree is a huge advantage if you want to apply for a master's program, because without your bachelor degree, you are not allowed to apply for master's. But other than that, it might look great on your resume, but it is not a requirement and it might earn you some extra points. But I don't want to discourage anyone else who doesn't have a bachelor degree. So if you are applying for a bachelor degree, you certainly have the advantage of already knowing how university works, I believe. And but uh, as for the admission part, we officially would not give you any extra points if you have bachelors, if that makes sense, because bachelor program is designed for students who graduated high school only. So it's an advantage for you, but you would, would not be uh, in like favor size, basically. And the uh, important thing to say is also that you are, if you are currently studying bachelors already, or if you happen to be in the US and study associate degree or some kind of equivalent to that in a different country, you can also apply as a transferring student, which means that in your online application, you would choose that you are a transferring student. You would have to submit not only your high school diploma and high school transcript, but you would have to submit also your partial university transcript. And based on the transcript and the syllabi that you would give us, we would be able to transfer some of your classes and some of the credits to AAU. And then you would be able to finish the program uh, in a shorter period of time. So if you are, for example, first year in your bachelor's program and you are not happy with your university, you can apply as a transferring student to AAU and we would transfer some of your classes. The decision which classes could be transferred is ultimately up to the dean's office. It is not up to us and they would have to discuss which classes are basically an equivalent to the classes that we offer. So thank you for the question. And I will wait if there is something more. We have still a couple of minutes. If there are no more questions, I will I will be definitely here 15 more minutes. But if you decided to leave right now, I want to say thank you to anyone who was here. I thank you for your questions. They're all really great. And I also learn something new from it. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to send me email, send it to my email, katarina.fundova, it's uh, in the chat, or to admissions at aauni, uh, dot a, sorry, admissions at aauni.edu. And if you are planning to go to Prague, you can definitely stop by and we can give you a campus store and chat uh, about what you need to hear. So if you want to have a trip to Prague, you can definitely stop by and we would be more than happy to show you around. 
we can also easily schedule a Skype call with you if you want. And again, if you're interested, uh, you can email us and you would have a Skype call, one-on-one -on -one Skype call either with me, with Adia or with Clea. So one of you would take care of you and answer any questions that you might have. All right, hello once again. I see that you enter the questions. Mm -hmm. So I think we can um, end our meeting. Okay. As you can see, 